Hello viewers, this Dow Too Fast here. In today's video, I'm excited to show you this brand new power supply I just picked up. This is a DC switching power supply with a variable output from 0 to 32 volt and a current setting from 0 to 6 amp. Now on my workbench in my garage, I do have an older power supply that I've been using for many years. But I need a second one for use on my repair desk in the home. Because I don't have a lot of space here, I was looking for a unit that is very compact in size. This one here is the Matrix MPS 3206. I'll show you everything you need to know about this power supply, so stay tuned. Here I'll show you the unboxing of this Matrix MPS 3206 power supply. AC power cord, positive and negative power leads, and here's the power supply. The first thing that stands out about this power supply is its size. It's very compact. The width of it is only four and a half inch. The height is three and a half inch. And the length is nine and a half inch. With this size, you can fit this on any workbench and it doesn't take up a lot of space. Now before I connect the AC power cord, I'm gonna turn this around. And at the back, there's a switch here. You want to make sure this is set to the correct AC input voltage for the country you're in. I'm in the US, so this switch needs to be set to 110. Now connect the AC power cord. The power supply come with these two power leads. Now when you look on the wire, it does not tell you what gauge wire it is. It only gives you an outside diameter of 3.5 millimeter. It's hard to say exactly what gauge it is, but I'm guessing it can be 14 or 16 gauge. On one end, you have the banana plug. You can plug this into the power supply. On the other end is the alligator clamps. With this DC switching power supply, you can set the output from 0 volt to 32 volt and adjust the output current from 0 to 6 amp. To turn on the power supply, press the power switch. Looking at the LED display, the output voltage is 30 volt and the output current is 5 amp. Now to the right of it, there's a knob right here. If I turn this, you won't see any changes on the display. To adjust the output voltage, press the VI button right here. You see the zero flash. Now you can turn the knob and adjust the value. Now if I push a knob, it'll toggle over to the next number. I'm gonna set this to 12 volt. Next, if you press a VI button again, now you can adjust the output current. I'm gonna set this to one amp. So at this point, I've set the output voltage to 12 volt and the output current to one amp, but it's not outputting on these wires yet. To enable the output, press the on off button right here. And now you see the on off word illuminated. Here I have my Fluke 87 multimeter. I connected it to the output. As you can see, it's showing exactly 12 volt output right now. Now one nice feature about this power supply is there are five presets you can save. With this set to 12 volt output right now, if I press the M1 for memory one, it'll save to memory one. Next, I'll set the power supply to output five volt at 500 milliamp. Now, if I don't turn off the output, as I'm changing the voltage, the voltage on the output will change as you're changing the value. You need to be careful of this because if you have a load connected to this power supply, the changing voltage that's coming out can damage the device. So the best practice is to push on off switch and turn off the output first. But let me show you what happens if I don't turn off the output. I'm going to change the voltage right now. I want to set to 5 volt. But as you can see, with the value change of 5, now it's outputting 15 volts. Now I'm going to save this to memory 2. If I press the on off button right here, I'll turn off the output. And turn it back on. If I press memory 1, that will go back to 12 volt. M2, 5 volt. Now next to the presets, there's an OVP and OCP button. 
That stands for over voltage protection and over current protection. You can use this to set a maximum voltage output and a maximum current output and the power supply will not exceed those settings. To set it, press the OVP OCP button right here. Currently the OVP is set to 33 volts. If I press and hold again, it will show you the OCP value. Right now it's 6 amp. Now if I press it again, right now it tells you the overcurrent protection is enabled. Let's go back in it again. I press it once more. Now the OVP is on. That tells you the OVP and OCP is enabled. But let me show you what happens when I enable the OVP. I'm going to set this to 10 volt. I'm going to press a button again to enable it. OVP is enabled. Right now with the power supply set to 12 volt at 5 amp, if I turn on the output, you see an error message for the OVP. This tells you the output voltage has exceeded the over voltage protection. This power supply also has several safety features built in. Besides the over current protection and the over voltage protection, it also has overheat protection and short circuit protection. Even if I accidentally short circuit the output lead, it won't damage the power supply. With this power supply, you can use it to test many electronic devices. In my hand here is a 12 volt LED strip. I'll connect the power supply to it. If you look on the power supply display, it's showing you it's outputting 12 volt and CV is illuminated. So it's maintaining a constant voltage of 12 volt. And right now this LED strip has a current flow of 0.191 amp or 191 milliamp. I can turn this off, turn it back on. Here I have an LED headlight. Now I know this LED light uses more than one amp. Let me show you what happens when I connect the power supply to it. The LED light does turn on. Now look at the display. Because I set the maximum current to one amp, it's maintaining that one amp. That's why CC is on for constant current. But while it's in this mode, it cannot hold the voltage constant. That's why you see the voltage drop. And this change is according to Ohm's law, which is voltage equals current times resistance. Now I'm going to change the maximum output current to 3 amps. Now I'll turn on the power supply. Now you see the LED light is operating at 12 volt and the current flow is 2.749 amp. So right now I have the multimeter measuring the current draw. As you can see the current measurement is the same as what's shown on the power supply, 2635 milliamp or 2.6 amp. Also I'm not sure if you heard the fan coming on earlier, this power supply has an intelligent fan. And when it needs additional cooling, the fan will turn on, oh, just turn on right now. And once the internal temperature has gone down, the fan will turn off automatically. This is nice because if you have this on a workbench, you don't have to listen to the fan being on all the time. Now of course the power supply is not only for lighting up a bunch of LED. Here I have a Ryobi portable radio. Normally it uses the 18 volt rechargeable battery. Here I have it connected to my power supply. I've set the output to 18 volt. Now I'll turn it on. Now here I have a halogen bulb. Right now the power supply is set to output 12 volt and the current flow is 4.5 amp. As you can see right now it's set to output 12 volt at 5 amp. I'm going to change the voltage here to 2 volts. I'm going to turn off the power supply. Turn it back on. As you can see, this power supply will remember the last setting you have. Overall, this is a very good DC switching power supply. With a 0 to 32 volt output and a maximum of 6 amp, you can use this to power and test all sorts of electronic devices. Besides having great features like the memory presets and the convenient output on off button, I really like the compact form factor of this power supply. I can put this in my work area and it doesn't take up a lot of space. Having said all that, you'll be surprised how much this cost. Right now you can get this on Amazon for $58 and there's an additional 5% off coupon you can check off next to the price. If you're interested, check out the link in the description below. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know in the comment section. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, remember to click on a thumbs up and if you're not already subscribed, please click on the subscribe button to support this channel. Also click on the notification bell so you'll get notified of my new videos. Thank you and have an awesome day.